Thank you. It's my pleasure to come from God's country in Oklahoma up to Kansas today. As an educator, I'm here to very briefly challenge you on two things and to remind you of two things, the power of words and the importance of questions. I am an educator, I am an academic, and the challenge I bring you today is to remind you that words mean something. Words like green and gay and left and right and change and choice and right and wrong, up and down and good and evil, moral and immoral. All words mean something. They have definitions. The bottom line is this, as thinking human beings, as thoughtful moral agents, we do know what the definition of is is. And we also intuitively know something very important. Changing and manipulating the meaning of words is called something. It is called lying. It is called deceit, and it always does bring consequences. As we are told by the prophet Isaiah, Woe unto him who calls evil good and good evil, darkness light and light darkness, bitter sweet and sweet bitter. Lying about words and with words, turning them upside down, is always wrong. As self-evident as it should be, all of us need to be reminded today that words indeed do mean something. Many today who will stand against us will do so, for example, in the name of tolerance. But their objection really doesn't reflect the definition of the word. In other words, is their objection tolerant? When they say they can't tolerate your intolerance and they hate you hateful people and they're sure that nothing is sure and they're absolutely confident that there are no absolutes and that they know nothing can be known, this is self-refuting duplicity. It is nonsense. I feel as if I'm watching a dog chase its tail, and I get dizzy as I watch this silly self-refutation. Any schoolboy can see that it isn't truly about tolerance. It never has been. It's about submission. It's about tyranny. It's about power. Yeah. This debate... This debate is not about tolerance. It's about freedom versus fascism, pure and simple. A fascist, a fascist is a Roman bundle of sticks bound so tightly together in commonality that they cannot be broken. Fascism is a group of people bound together so tightly so tightly that they cannot be broken. No differences, no diversity. It's all about power, it's all about compliance, it's all about agreement. The religious debate that we face today is about such government-imposed agreement as opposed to individual freedom. Bottom line, it's about whether or not the government should have the power to force religious syncretism and compliance upon culture and upon the courts. Questions you should be asking. Should the government force a Jewish owner of a meat processing business to process pigs? Should the government force the Muslim owner of the local newspaper to print Charlie Hebdo cartoons? Should a Catholic owner of a convenience store sell, have to sell bread and wine to a Satanist church for their mock Eucharist? Should the government enforce an evangelical owner of a billboard company to do a campaign that mocks Christmas or Easter. And here, should the government force a Catholic order called the Little Sisters of the Poor to buy insurance that includes a product that induces 
abortion. The little sisters of the poor are Catholic, my land. Why do they need any contraception? They're celibate. And don't these women, don't these women understand their church, their faith, their vows, their body, and their corresponding behavioral obligations better than a government bureaucrat? I believe these women know what kind of pills they do or do not want in their insurance. To force the pro-Catholic, pro-life, little sisters of the poor, to comply with this government mandate is fascism. And to force my university, my evangelical Christian university that holds the same values, the women that work at my university are pro-life by definition. And why should anybody insult them by telling them that they're too stupid to understand what kind of health care they want? How is this possibly, how is this possibly pro-woman to suggest otherwise? Isn't such forced agreement totalitarian rather than tolerant? And isn't forcing these women to comply and submit an example of ideological fascism rather than intellectual freedom? Isn't the government establishing what religion, I'll repeat that, isn't the government establishing what religion and is acceptable and what religion isn't? And isn't the government prohibiting the free expression thereof of anything and by anyone who disagrees with said government? I'll leave you with this. Words, words, Words mean something. Hang on to your words. Define them and defend them. Honor them. Honor words such as freedom and fight words such as fascism. Stand for toleration and fight tyranny. Stand for love and fight hate for the rights of women and fight against their subjugation and objectification. Stand for liberty and liberation. Be classically liberal, if you will, and stand in the face of imposed licentiousness. Remember this. Remember the words of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Not to speak is to speak, and not to act is to act. Silence in the face of evil is evil itself. God will not hold us guiltless. And remember the words of Jesus Christ. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free.